Hey, what's up guys? I'm Ray Torian and welcome back to Crusader Kings 3, Wards and Wardens. So unfortunately, today's episode will be the finale for the series. I had planned on doing at least one more video, if not two more, before we started our vacation. However, the coughing issue has pretty much made it impossible for me to do that because I can't record more than one episode at a time. And then that one episode that I'm recording, I'm having to record like 30 extra minutes to just account for all the coffin fits and cutting those out. I don't know what's wrong with me guys. I'd go to the doctor because it has been bothering me for long enough that I'd consider going to the doctor, which I usually don't go. Uh, but I don't have any health insurance right now, so that's not really an option at the moment. Uh, but in addition to that, I'm just incredibly busy right now with trying to get everything ready for this trip. We're going overseas. This is uh, the first time my family has left the country. I've gone to Mexico a few times many, many years ago. So this is our first big trip. It's also a really long trip at three weeks. So it's just a lot of planning and getting ready and, and packing, making sure we don't forget anything. And so I want to focus on that for the next day or so. And also we're on a new patch, guys. So I actually had to roll back uh, the version of CK3 to the previous version because that patch came out today. I did forget about that releasing. I generally don't like being on an old patch and whenever one does come out a new one that we can't uh, play on our current campaign I gotta roll back. I often end the series because of that. So that's another thing to consider. And finally, this series uh, is not very popular right now. Ever since we took that break, which isn't surprising. That's typically the case whenever I take long breaks for a series. A lot of people don't come back to it, which is why I don't like taking those long breaks. So it is unfortunate because I wanted to make sure that we made it through uh, Emperor Gerard, uh, his life, which, I mean, he should die. He's lived a lot longer than I expected. I, I thought he would die several videos ago, and that hasn't been the case. And so he's lived a lot longer, which might let us get to that living legend, but it also means that we might not get to play as our son at all, the cynical, greedy Kallus character here. He's not that much different than his father in a sense. I guess the Kallus is such an important trait. He's not brave or, or wrathful though. Um, yeah, the greedy could have been fun to, to play with, and just seeing him being a mastermind philosopher here, he's already got the herbalist trait and the theologian. He's also a military engineer. Not very good, Marshall, so... You could just have them leading like your uh, sieging units. Hey, you got the valued diplomatic courtier, so I mean, that's helping him a little bit. Yeah, overall, he's got the traveler too. That's giving a, a little bit of diplomacy too. Yeah, it would have been fun to play as this character. So even if our character does die in today's episode, we won't get to play as him for very long, the godless Ravener. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and jump into today's episode. Remember, we're currently doing the tournament here. I'll figure out where the damn button is. And so we've got about a week now here, and we'll get to pick another event. We're attempting to recruit knights. Uh, let's go ahead and go to, we're going to go back to the artisan quarters, because that event we got there was kind of crappy, just our wife over here uh, looking at the smith. So we'll see what this event is. The local lancer, surveying the assembled petty nobility gathered in Trier, I spot just the sort of man I need. This is Bolner von Assel. He's a wayward horseman of some experience, traveling from court to court seeking a lord to serve. Such men are normally to be distrusted, but his talents are immediately obvious. As I approach to make my introduction, Count Ansgar appears beside him, clearly sharing my idea. So he wants to hire this guy as well. He's not really a good knight. He's not a decent marshal. He's hideously ugly, apparently. Okay, so I mean, he's not bad, but he's just not a good knight. He would never be able to serve us. Uh, so we can say, be assured I will pay better. Walter, you sit in my grand pavilion. Come, you'd ra really rather serve a mere count? Or step aside, Ansgar, your emperor comes first. Or you just say, I won't barter over a knight, and then he'll join him. I think that's probably what we'd do, because uh, it's not that we don't want to barter for him, we just don't care about him. He's just not very good. Yeah, I, I don't think we would even care. we just overlook him, like whatever. Cause yeah, his uh, skill was not all that impressive. All right, so the next one, do we have time? We will, I think, yeah, have time to do one more. Uh, let's go to the village. Maybe you find a good knight there, I don't know. Uh, Merrymaking, uh, I think we've seen this one before, yeah. So my subjects will be delighted to see me joining and they'll get the, the village dancing plus 10 opinion, uh, but we'll lose prestige and gain some stress because of callous, but we have another choice here what to participate. But yeah, we've seen that event, I'm, I'm pretty sure. All right, so the archery contest is going to start up here, and I, I suppose we could place a bet, because we have so much money, why not? Just to make the games a little bit more fun, and so we need to pick which one we think is the most likely to win. 
So will it be Ironside with his 37 prowess? Or Count Kuno with his 6 prowess? Well, geez, I wonder. Now, he is a hunter, so that's something to consider because you do get a bit of a, a bonus from that, but I would assume he is as well. Well, maybe not. Oh, he's a hunter. Blade Master, athletic, strong. Yeah, I think we should go with him. He's a safe bet. Could go with the underdog, but, uh, I mean, you really don't know because prowess isn't the only thing that determines who wins. Oh, wow, so this is that event. So we, we paid the max amount of money, and we still had the problem with the pavilions crashing down. Now, it does say it just makes it less likely, but I have never seen this not fire at any time that I've done uh, my own tournament. I've always seen them them fall. And so I think it might be better to just pay the least amount of money and just save your save your goal because it just seems like it seems like it doesn't matter what happens. And then you're always going to get the uh the negative 25 opinion. And also it killed this this character over here. I don't know who he is. Just a random guy. Very learned though. All right, so I think we might want to execute him. We'd be pretty upset about this. Yeah. We're very angry. So let's execute him. That also grants us uh, an increase of popular opinion, but we'll make it uh, more expensive to construct. And capital, which is unfortunate, because I think we're almost done with the building here. And we did improve Duke Drogo as a knight. That uh, ransom was accepted. That we sent off at the end of last episode. Okay, and it looks like we finished construction at a few locations. But we're only going to build in the capital for right now. Since we're currently busy. And so yeah, let's go ahead and I guess we'll improve the... Uh, the stables once more. Get the uh, courier stations. And I think that's the last one we'll be able to get until we upgrade the building again. Yeah, we need to get the Castle Bailey's innovation. So we'll be done with that and then we'll work on uh, another building line getting it improved. Alright, so we'll see who wins the archery contest. And it looks like we've got a Marshall perk as well, so we'll have to take a look at that here in a minute. But let's first see who wins this. So is this Count Manrique. So he's the winner. What was his uh, prowess? 14. So he's like a mid-range. Alright, so we're done with the archery contest. Let's go and pause this real quick. We're going to get our perk selected. Also, we're offered a Betrolo for our granddaughter. So this is the daughter of Princess Yoda. And her name is the same. So she is 12 years old, and this is the Empress of Castile. Is this the heir? This is the heir. Well, that's actually a really solid marriage. Let me just take a look if there's anybody from our main line that we might want to arrange a marriage with instead. He does have a disputed heritage, though. Interesting. So that's not good. Seems that all the children do. So what was she, uh... Let me just take a look. Does she have, like, some lovers? She does. It's probably this guy's kids. I mean, it doesn't really matter in this particular case because she's the Empress. So we know that it's her child. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at our son's daughters. So she's nine. Uh, she would be uh, a better option. So let me just take a look and see if they'd be willing to accept this. You would think so. So we want to arrange a marriage for... Here she is. Her granddaughter. And yeah, looks like he would be, or she would be willing to accept that. So this is what we're going to do. Let's go ahead and, oh, it already disappeared. Okay, I was going to decline that. Looks like we don't need to. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and find her again. And then uh, arrange his marriage between these two. I think this is a, a solid marriage. Uh, we can't do a grand wedding, though. That's unfortunate, because only the dominant side can offer to organize a grand wedding. Okay, that's fine. I don't know if they offered, if she offered one. I didn't see that. But it feels like it should be a grand wedding. Two, uh, uh, two children of emperors or empresses in this case. Yeah, it feels like that should be a grand wedding. So now we need to go down this route here. This is going to increase the rate that we gain control in counties. And I don't think we have any issues with control. I mean, maybe in this uh, one location here. Let me just take a look. Now, it's at 100 now. We did already get that up without even sending anybody to do that. We're seeing if there's anything in here we need to be aware of. So as we can take a look at these potential prisoners. Yeah, you could arrest like the mayor. Anybody who you could charge money for their crimes would be useful. So we'll imprison that mayor 
And then uh, there's also a count. I can be in prison. I'm not entirely sure who this guy is. But yeah, might as well imprison him, I suppose. Could even take his county from him and give it to somebody else. Uh, though we have to wait. Can only imprison one person at a time, apparently. All right, so the joust begins. Uh, I don't know if we're gonna bet anymore. Yeah, maybe the best person win. We're not gonna play much of a role in this anymore. We're getting a lot of uh, prestige from everybody who participates. So it's not completely useless as we're trying to get to the living legend before we die. And so it's certainly still useful, guys. All right, so we rested him and we have one more count that I'm seeing here. Uh, I can also rest our daughters, but we're not gonna do that. Oh, only a 41% chance of being successful here. Okay, that's not worth fighting a war over. All right, so we have these two imprisoned here. Well, we can revoke his title, but of course the problem here is that he's not a direct vassal, so we'd have to take him from the Duke just to take his title. Yeah, I don't really want to do that because I'd probably just grant it back to him anyways, just for the opinion boost. And because he's kind of a weak Duke here with just the one county, I don't even know how many vassals he has. Just the two counts. But them together could easily operate against him just because he's he's not very powerful of himself. Uh, but yeah, I don't really see any benefits uh, of doing that, taking the title from him or taking his vassal from him. Uh, so what we'll do is just uh, negotiate for the money, I think. We'll just ransom. So we'll get that 50 gold. And then I guess we need to also deal with her, the mayor. That's another 30 gold we can get. Oh, and somebody's already uh, offering. Well, we'll go ahead and accept that then. All right, so I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. All right, so the semi-finals are over. It's an interesting round. And yeah, so we'll see who's set to win this. This cough is just so bad, it's ridiculous. Just, I feel like I'm coughing the entire damn video. All right, so I believe this will determine the winner. I wish we could skip it. Skip the little animation just so you can get to it. All right, so it's been decided, and it looks like the winner is, again, Count Manrique. Wow, I'm very surprised. He's now won two different uh, parts of the tournament. So he's getting a lot of uh, a lot of goodies for himself. And is this where they, yeah, this is where he poured, uh, poured some of his drink on us. And so, of course, as an angry, raffle character here, we're not going to go with that option. Probably just straight up imprison him. Yeah, we're gonna have him dragged off. Who is his, uh, okay, so Duke of Champagne is his, his liege. So because of that, can't really take a title or anything, so we're just going to, did he not get imprisoned? Yeah, it seems he didn't actually get imprisoned. Maybe he didn't say it imprisoned him. Maybe we were just dragging him out of the tournament. I didn't actually read it, but yeah. I was thinking I'd get to throw him in the prison and ransom him off. So, I don't know why this is notifying us again that he won. Yeah, this little screen telling us what we already knew. Enrique has now won two. Two of the contest. Another secret exposed. Tons of uh, secrets being exposed lately. Here's another one. This is, I think, involving the same characters, though. Yeah, we had like uh, three or four different secrets that were revealed in the previous episode. Uh, so we did get our next knight. And so he's pretty good. He's a lowborn knight, but uh, let's give him a chance. Let's recruit him to court. So give him the 30 gold, and he would be serving us. Since again, our, our worst knight was uh, 15 prowess. Uh, looks like we also have an offer over here, uh, an alliance that's being offered here with our granddaughter. Yeah, I don't know why we wouldn't accept that. Remember, she. Uh, Succeeded to all those titles when her brother lost them. Uh, we might want to take a look and see who she is set to to marry. Because I did not arrange a marriage for her. Okay, so I'm not entirely sure who this dynasty is. It looks like the grandfather here was the Duke of Burgundy. Okay, so they don't currently hold any titles. They just have the, the claims here to Upper Burgundy. I see. So, I mean, they probably have some level of prestige, but really not the best choice for the granddaughter of an emperor and the daughter of a king. I suppose I should have checked if I could have arranged that marriage for her. Hard to say because she has her own titles. Probably, though. 
But yeah, we didn't arrange a marriage for our grandson either, who is who we would play as if, if the uh, campaign was to continue. And it's probably another terrible, yeah, not a great marriage here, guys. That's the choice they made. It's a betrothal right now, it's still 14, but look at our grandson. His traits, first of all, he's got four of them. Cynical, like his father. He's just, though, so that's interesting. We have not played as a just character. Uh, he's ambitious, and he's honest. Uh, but what's most interesting is these lifestyle traits he has. He's a novice physician, so he has a physician trait. You very rarely ever see this in your played characters. He's also an herbalist, which I think his father is as well. He's reclusive, he's scarred, and he still has his rowdy childhood trait, which that, of course, will be uh, taken when he becomes an adult and gets his education. He disrespects the elderly, self-preserving, uh, self and destined for glory. All right, very uh, interesting situation here. Again, it doesn't matter because we won't be able to play as him, but yeah, it's a kind of a shame because this has been uh, one of the series I've really enjoyed. I mean, I always enjoy the, the CK3 roleplay series. There hasn't been one I, I didn't like, actually. I had quite a bit of fun with all of them. Uh, so we're now starting the wrestling one. Or we're in the quarterfinals now. Just finish those up. I mean, Count Manrique is back in it. But it looks like he lost this time. So he almost won. But yeah, very surprising to see him do so well. And in fact, it looks like he's increased his, his prowess while due to these victories. So Magnus is the winner here. Just a wandering character. Wandering lowborn character. Alright, so they're not quite done, so he didn't actually win it. He just won that bout. And so let's see who won the final match of the wrestling. Probably Magnus, right? No, he lost, and instead it was Count Philip. So a fine contest. Alright, so I think that means that's the end here. Though we did get another event about potential suitors. As I settle myself near the front of the crowd with my nephew Gonzalan, the contestants trot across the field in front of us. Gonzalan nudges me a couple times, indicating two of the competitors with a not too subtle head gesture. What do you think of these two, he says, stifling a delighted giggle. Which one is your pick? It's clear from his overly active eyebrows that he isn't asking who I think is going to win. Look, look, they're walking closer. Say something. Loud enough they'll hear. Well, that's interesting. Is he, uh, oh, he's a bisexual. Okay, so that's why he'd be asking us about these two men. Which kind of, uh, for us, you know, we're, we're heterosexual, so I don't think we would be judging him that way. But, uh, what I notice here is that we'll not only improve opinion with, with our nephew, uh, but we'll also get a strong hook on either one of these two characters because they'll be more loyal. And so this is Count Philip. He's a vassal of a vassal. And then you have Count Kuno, who is actually one of our vassals, so probably the better choice. And, you know, we don't really, we're not looking at them based on uh, their actual attractiveness here. Just which one's going to benefit us more. So in that case, we'll look at Count Kuno, where we'll say, wow, just look at him. Since he's at least one of our own vassals here. Well, it looks like we got some broken localization here. Uh, but Count Philip did win. So we picked the wrong guy. Clearly. Alright, so this is the conclusion to the Grand Tournament. Just kind of curious what all they won here. Looks like some pretty good stuff. Because we spent so much money. So yeah, they got some excellent items here. And Count Manrique got two of those. Such a bummer that we didn't get any of these. Uh, but we did get some trade experience in the Hasta Looter, I guess from watching them. Uh, also, we got some stress reduction. Our dynasty got a lot of renown, so that's nice. Got some bonuses here for 10 years for our men at arms. I don't know if any of our, I suppose we only have the one knight, but yeah, if they participated, they got some, some glory as well. Uh, we could try and do this one here, but we'd probably fail. So we'll just go with this off, and what a great occasion. And we did it. We got to the living legend. All right, excellent. So I'm really glad we achieved that before our death. 62 years old. This is you, though. You don't always feel like yourself. Well, that's interesting. That says that there, but uh, yeah, we got into the living legend. We did it, guys. So you get some additional bonuses, secular opinion, and another knight. And here's the actual conclusion to the grand tournament. 
So that was enough to just push us over the edge and get that. So I'm glad we were able to achieve that before the end of the series. She's competent. He's very competent. Okay, we're gonna sponsor... We're gonna sponsor both of them just because we got a lot of money to throw around. So we have to select what we want the tapestry to show. We can say something showcasing the untamed beauty of nature, something that illustrates the history of Empire of Germany, or a representation of what life is like in my realm. Let's go with this one. So he's weaving a historical record. And then I think we're also going to support her. I mean, she's very competent too. So yeah, we'll go ahead and support both of them. Just throwing the money around here in our old age. And I think we might want to do another activity. Could do a grand tour. I think he might be a little bit old for that. Maybe we'll do like a uh, a smaller activity. Oh, that's interesting. We have a claim to this now. So we could demand it from this lowborn character. He has no use for it. So might as well. Uh, though we can't demand it from him. Because we've already demanded this artifact in the last five years. Could try and steal it. That's a scheme. Would not be able to get him to accept us challenging for it. Why not plot to steal it? It's the only item he has of ours. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. We're going to start a heist. Try and steal it. Alright, we'll see if there's anything else in here that we need to be aware of. Yeah, we know about the realm losing the land there. And there's not much we can do about it. Uh, we can modify some contracts. We don't want to modify our sons, but... Uh, could modify Count Kuno's. Increases taxes. It's not going to make much of a difference there, but why not? Make use of that strong hook. So yeah, we'll modify his contract. Because we said he looks good in the tournament. And uh, apparently there's another tournament going on right now. Because our knights are qualifying for that. Uh, so the Duke here has arrived to pay homage, and he did bring gold as well. Which is what we like to see. All right, so we got a lot of stuff going on down there, down here now. And this is one of the characters trying to sway our nephew and spy master. So as far as like what he'd like best, probably diplomatic matters. Or actually, let me take that back. The subterfuge and intrigue is definitely the one he'd want. So we'll go for that. This should result in an opinion boost. Yeah, 10 plus there. And what is this here? Oh, that's really nice. This is for five years. A reduction of men in arms maintenance. That's, that's going to be significant. And you can see it already had its impact over here. And uh, the King of Tuscany, who's known as the Mad Italian, is now his court language. Was it, What was it before? German? I'm not entirely sure what he had to his court language. Alright, so another event here about that inspiration that we've seen before. As a Cal's character, might not want to go with that option. Let's go with this option since it has a chance to improve the quality of the inspiration. And we were successful. It was only a 50% chance. But the other option only resulted in us getting a bit of money. We can add a dedication to that tapestry. It'd be a dedication to our daughter, Queen Adelheide. She's the queen of Croatia. And she'll become our friend and be impressed by us. Sure, why not? And yeah, we'll do that. Alright, so we're best friends with our, our young daughter now. Here's that a lot of our knights are qualifying, or that might have been the same one, if that was Drogo. And our core positions, knowledge continues to increase here. Alright, excellent. So yeah, he's now getting that 4 plus learning there. He's pretty good. 61 years old, we'll have to see if he outlives us or not. And we were able to sway Duke Simon as well, so we've gotten his opinion pretty high here. And if we just take a look and see if we're done with them. Uh, we could boost it one more time since it's still a good chance of, of being successful, guys. So why not? All right, so we're building here. We might want to start construction somewhere else. Uh, but I also talked about doing another activity. I think what we need to do is like a feast. Now, we can't do a hunt because we're infirm. Could do a pilgrimage. I don't know. He's never been the most religious guy. I don't think we're going to do that. I think we do a feast because we do need to boost opinion. You know, Nobody likes us. So why not? We'll do a big old feast here. We're gonna plan this. It's not gonna be a murder feast. It'll just be a regular feast here, guys. 
And we're going to do this in the capital because we don't like to leave home if we can uh, avoid it. All right, so we'll do it here. As far as who the honorary guest is going to be, well, who do we want to, to honor? Probably like a, a vassal. Perhaps one of these vassals doesn't like us. Well, we've been trying to boost the opinion of Duke Pierre, so it makes sense to, to make him the honorary guest. Might think we're trying to kill him too, though. We'll have to see. Uh, and then we're just going to spend as much money as possible here. Get all the bonuses there. And then as far as what our intent is, could try and befriend somebody. Do we need to lose stress? I don't even know if we have any. We might not. Yeah, I don't think we have any stress. We could just attempt to befriend somebody. Let's see who we might want to befriend. Maybe this duke out here. Could also try and befriend the character we're inviting. Why not? Yeah, we'll make friends with him. All right, so let's go and start the feast up. And we'll see how this goes. And hopefully he will attend. He did. All right, so we have a lovely time ahead of us. Yeah, just working on activities, just enjoying our time. As Emperor here, the last years of our life. We do need to speed this up, could make it a lot more progress. So she needs more funds. She's sick? Yeah, she's ill. Whatever you need, we want a higher quality item here. And we're not able to sway either of them, unfortunately. Still at 75% for, for both of them. But yeah, we tried to sway Duke Pierre, but we, we failed. It seems that we are dying. We're at death's doorstep. Okay, so... Not gonna last much longer. I'm, I'm glad though, honestly, because I wanted, you know, we achieved our goal here, becoming a living legend. Also, we got that fascination, uh, the Castle Baileys. Okay, so let me just take a look at that, because that's actually what we needed to uh, improve this here. So that's yeah, something maybe our son can work on. Oh, what happened to our granddaughter? She died under mysterious circumstances. Somebody took her out. And then her daughter inherited. Hmm. I wonder. Seems the father benefits the most from this. Who inherits after her? The father does. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I'm just assuming the father's responsible. So we're gonna start a murder scheme. Maybe he's not responsible. Um, maybe we can't get this done before we die. I, mean, I wonder if we should just imprison him just to make sure we can get it done. I don't know if that's going to be it. Yeah, we would succeed. We would cause a bunch of dread right as we're about to die, though. So probably not the best way to do that. Our son can always handle this since it is his daughter. We we'll just share the knowledge with him that we think it's him. I have no evidence at all. But I'm blaming him anyways because he's the one who benefited the most. I feel like he killed his own, his own spouse or granddaughter. So yeah, we're blaming him. I was talking about something. Now I got distracted. I don't know what the hell I was talking about. But yeah, now we're working on that. It's quite the thing to be distracted about, though. And yeah, let's dedicate this to our wife as we die. Well, yes, the cultural fascination. That's what it was. Okay, so I'm glad that popped up because yeah, I could not remember what it was I was supposed to be looking at here. So the Castle Baileys. I'm not entirely sure why I worked on that one out of all the... The options here. Maybe I didn't select it. Maybe somebody else selected it. But I think we're to go for knighthood, guys. Or maybe I just forgot. I could have forgotten that one after that. We're not going to do the windmills. I mean, these are all useful, but I want knighthood. I think that makes the most sense. Again, it doesn't really matter because we won't get it in time for the end of the series here. That would take us... How long is this going to take us here? 32 years for us to get that. And we're able to get that building constructed, so let's go and get the next thing. Uh, we can improve the jousting fields, and so that makes a lot of sense to get. Some very nice bonuses here, including some more men-at-arms maintenance reduction. So let's go and get that. That's very expensive. Probably shouldn't spend any more money, guys, considering the fact that our son's going to need it. Now, I did notice that he did have a good little chunk of money. Yeah, he's got 593, so he'll have a bit of money. And we did finish up with the tapestry, so that's going to increase renown by 0.10 per month. Court Grandeurs uh, getting a plus three, and then Glory Hounds will contribute more taxes. I don't know how that compares to what we currently have. We could take a peek, see if we want to replace anything, because we already have this one here, which is better. Uh, this one here is also better. I guess you could replace the Lorraine Dynasty banner, because you get more renown, which is more important than, than prestige. 
The independent ruler opinion's not that big of a bonus. Yeah, I really feel like this is better than that. So yeah, we'll replace that. Where do we have that set up? Is that in the middle here? It is. Okay, so let me just take a look and see if that's what we want. In the middle, it is named after us. Yeah, why not? We'll put that tapestry right there. I do like having the dynasty one right there, but uh, yeah, I think this looks better. And it's giving better bonuses, which is what's important here. And it's named after Emperor Gerard, so you got that right behind him. Our son will sit there and be able to remember his father. Uh, so another betrothal offer from the Empress of Castile. Do we really need another? Another betrothal here? Yeah, I don't feel like that's necessary. We're gonna decline that. We already got one going. All right, so this is Emperor Gerard's cabinet, increasing piety significantly, and also giving you a renown bonus. Well, let's take a look at that and see if we want to put it in place. Uh, but there's somebody else that we can sponsor. This is an adventure inspiration. I don't think we're gonna spend any more money though, guys, since our character's not not long for this world. Um, so let me just take a look and see if we want a place. We actually have an open location, so why not? Oh, that's really large, isn't it? Hmm, do we want to keep it there or bring it over? Because, yeah, these are different slots here. I feel like it should be over here. Yeah, I think it looks a little bit better in the corner there. So that's the furniture. You don't get that constructed very often. All right, we got agents joining the scheme. And we also got that feast kicking off now. Uh, so let me just take a look and see how we're doing here on all of our schemes. Seven months to get that done. I hope we can complete it. Everybody hates this guy. Again, I feel like everybody knows he's he's the guilty guilty party here. Uh, but we're also still attempting to steal that artifact. So stomach rumbling. It's taken much of the evening to get myself close to Duke Pierre without making it feel forced. After all, the best friendships are natural, and I want him to think this is spontaneous. The man gently dabs at the corners of his mouth with a corner of soiled tablecloth, brushing away crumbs of flaky pastry. I just hope the next course is a bit lighter, he opines. The whole point of a feast is to provide a rich, varied culinary experience, and so far this has felt more like it's trying to stuff us than excite us. So he's, we can say yes, sadly, is just a poor choice, I think. That's only a 5% chance to make him a friend, 5% chance that we make it more likely we get the friendship, and an 89% chance we get the opinion boost, which that's helpful too. Uh, we could instead say, you do realize this is my feast, yes? And he'll see this as an overreaction or switch the subject to something less contentious. Well, our purpose here is to be friends with them, so let's go ahead and do that. And he is the guest of honor. And she's been helping us in our feast, and so we got that household efforts bonus, the direct vassal opinion plus five, also getting plus 10 opinion with courtiers and guests. And you lose some stress that we don't have. Not stressed out in our old age here. And everybody is joining this scheme. Yeah, everybody hates that guy. He's the regent there, and it's just so suspicious. All right, so a laudable effort. So as the feast is underway, our guests are eating and drinking merrily. Duke Pierre approaches Adelheid and me at the great table. This is a marvelous feast. All my compliments to the host. So we say, yes, I've done a great job, haven't I? Or Adelheid deserves all the credits. We already have the household efforts. Um, but... We don't have any traits that would say we we go with either. I don't know, I feel like we're going to say this one. <laughs> we're going to deny her the credit. Alright, so the high table breaks. Yeah, we've seen this event before here, and he does become our friend, uh, which is excellent. That's what we wanted. We made friends with him. I mean, really, we were just trying to get the opinion boost, but getting the friendship is extra helpful. And that will play a role for our son as well, because, you know, we get that, that bonus based on the... Uh, you know, the previous ruler and their opinion of them. All right, so the feast is drawing to a close. Let's go ahead and toast our honored guest here. And he'll become highly esteemed, gaining more prestige. And he's our friend now. Uh, can we become a friend with another character? Oh, with our daughter, Princess Agnes, who apparently is ill. And she's depressed on top of that. What's going on with her husband here? Oh, he has consumption, so he's not doing well either. Everybody's all sick in her realm. Well, that's not good. All right, so this is the celebration's end, and we're gonna get all those nice bonuses. And also get the great banquet bonus for development, growth, and popular opinion in our capital. I wonder where we're at on the eager reveler. 
Let me just take a look. How well we've done there. Not well. We haven't gone to or thrown many fe uh, feast. But yeah, that's a nice entry bonus if we can continue to build it up. Finally, the Duke of Brittany is willing to accept vassalization. I feel like we should do this even for the low feudal obligations just to add it to our empire, guys, before our character dies here and before we end the series. Uh, and it looks like our daughter, Christine, has had another son. This is her third son. This one's also a Gingy like her and like his, his brother. And we're all just assuming these are Matthias' children. So we named the eldest after him. And so what do we want to name this one here? Maybe Wilhelm? Why not? Yeah, we'll go with that. And he did accept vassalization. Excellent. So now, Brittany has been added to our empire. Fantastic. Just looks a lot better that way. Tuscany is the only problem here, which, you know, he's a king. So you have to, to conquer him. Of course, you still need to get this territory from Poland too, but uh, I don't want to spend any money or do anything like that until our character dies. It's supposed to happen any moments, but he just keeps on holding on here. Just keeps holding on. I mean, once you get this notification, you can't be, uh... Yeah, you're not gonna live much longer. Oh, no. Adelheid of Croatia, who's not just our daughter, but also our friend, has died. Ah, that's so unfortunate. She did have a whole large brood of children. She died under mysterious circumstances. I wonder who took her out. Can't really get revenge if we don't know, though. Alright, so our alliance with Croatia has ended. How much longer will he rule before his son takes over? Who, remember, is of our dynasty. He's only 44. Yeah, he'll probably live for a while unless something happens to him. Yeah, the Lorraine dynasty will be taking over in Croatia once he dies. Yeah, just very unfortunate. We gained a lot of stress from that and just quite upset. You never want to outlive your child, especially when you're about to die. We couldn't die before we found out about that. Just devastating. Devastating, guys. All right, let me just see if there's... Yeah, I still can't do that there. shouldn't even notify you if it's not an option. Also can't appoint anybody there. Uh, we have something here, though. And this is involving King Stanislav of Croatia. So he's been visiting our court on his way to a holy site or something. And yeah, we've seen this event where he's just uh, throwing money around. So we can be even more generous, but we're really not very generous. We could take advantage of his silly generosity, and he'll pay us some gold here. It's an entry challenge. Or we can say, we believe he's overstayed his welcome, or better him spending than me. Um, yeah, let's do this one. He's convinced, of course he is. He gave us more gold. That'll be helpful for our son. A secret has been exposed here. My vassal Count Kuno has brought forward evidence. Oh, wait a minute. This is involving Stanley Suave. Wow, look at this guy. So the Count Kuno, remember we have that uh, strong hook on that we did make use of it recently to change his taxes. Uh, but he is claiming that our grandson here is not the son of the King of Croatia, Stanley Suave, but in fact our friend the Duke Pierre, who we just had that feast for. Wow, this is huge. Because, yeah, now he has a disputed heritage. And this is who's supposed to be inheriting. I just wonder if it's like, if all the children are his. I mean, he certainly looks a lot like him, doesn't he? He looks almost just like him. Let me just take a look at his supposed father. Eh, less like him. But maybe... I feel like the nose is closer between these two. Definitely not our daughter's nose. I can't believe a friend would do that. All right, so we did steal this artifact. I don't know that that's going to be something we want to put in place. It doesn't seem like it. We could take a look real quick, but yeah, it doesn't seem like uh, something that's going to be better than we are what we already have. But yeah, we'll, we'll take a look. Compared to our other items here. So this is the new one. You do get more renown. Well, probably not more than the ones we already have, yeah? Yeah, I don't think it's better. So we won't want to put it in place. We also can't destroy it because it's too good. So we stole it for nothing, but it was rightfully ours. So 
I don't feel bad about it. All right, so it looks like we can try and uh, kill him this way. 95% chance of success again. Everybody wants him dead, and he's dead. <laughs> All right, so we've taken him out. So let's just take a look. Oh, we did not outlive our doctor, or we did outlive our doctor. Excuse me. Obviously, I was hoping that he would survive because he's so good. He could take care of us in our uh, in our deathbed. Uh, but it looks like that will not be the case. All right, so her new regent is our grandson. And that is, I guess that'd be her uncle. Yeah, that'd be her uncle. So Prince Gerard is now the regent over there. So let me just take a look at the succession now. I don't want him inheriting either. Oh, that's interesting. He's from this family. Yeah, that's his grandfather. Okay, I didn't even know that. So basically, we want it to go down to our grandsons here. So you need to take out... At the very least, you want to take out that character. You certainly don't want to go into this uh, Duke here. Either, though. So probably need to take him out first. He's our own vassal, though. Oh, that's interesting. Our grandson inherits all his territory. Makes sense to kill him too then, huh? <laughs> Let's murder him. We're gonna be murdering everybody. And then we'll just go ahead and start the murder plot for him as well, because we don't have a lot of time left, although I keep on saying that, but good God, we're never going to, uh, we could just imprison him. Again, we don't want the dread though. I keep on saying that, but yeah, it seems like we're never gonna die. I wonder if we're even gonna die before the end of this episode. I'll try to play as long as I can here, guys. And we even outlived our spouse. Wow. We're outliving everybody. Our doctor, our spouse. We need to get another doctor, by the way. And our vassal was wounded here. So let's go ahead and, and select another doctor here. See who we want to put into this position. Uh, you could have Otto do it. He's not as good as Themo, though. The antiquarian. Neither one of them had the doctor trait, but they'd eventually get it. I feel like let's put our brother in this position. He hasn't got to do much. He's been a high almoner here, but yeah, let's give him another job here. I not trust him. So put him in position. Maybe he'll get more trained with that. We're not going to marry here in our old age. I know it would be useful to have a spouse serving us, but uh, yeah, we're not going to do that. I mean, we're barely hanging on here. Although, I don't know, man. Feels like this is a lie. It popped up like a year and a half ago or something like that. We're still here. Yeah, we'll just have to wait and see what happens here. And there we go. We died. I didn't know if we were going to make it for the end of the episode here. Uh, so Emperor Dry the First of Germany rests in the arms of the Lord at 64 years of age. He died of old age, a keen and dedicated hunter. He loved to spend entire weeks in the wilderness looking for the most elusive game. That's not really the way I'd describe the Emperor, though. Just on his hunting? We didn't even do that many hunts. There's so many other ways you could describe him. CK3, and CK3 needs to improve on this screen, man. Uh, so, Emperor Gerard ascends to the throne, renowned for his interest in metaphysical matters. He might be ill-equipped to deal with the everyday problems of secular, secular rule. I'm really glad we got to see the end of Emperor Gerard's life. So, he ruled for 42 years total. He was dreaded, living legend, devoted servant, you know, we were doing that martial lifestyle, but we also finished up those two intrigue lifestyles. You know, that was our main one. Uh, we fought in 12 wars. Five of those were offensive, seven were defensive. We hosted only three activities, not much. One grand tournament, one grand wedding, one feast. Wow, that's it. Uh, we attended eight activities, so I guess we did go to quite a bit, uh, quite a few hunts, five of them, but still not really the way I'd describe our character. Uh, we went to two grand tournaments and one feast. So taking a look at, you know, the sh those are all the titles that our uh, son got. And just taking a look at all of our characters now, starting with Duke Gerard the first. Although it's kind of confusing here. Because they're all named Gerard, but they're all kind of the first. Because you got Duke Gerard the first, and then he's an emperor, so he's Emperor Gerard, but I think, was the imperial title changed or something? I'm not sure what happened there, because now you have uh, another Emperor Gerard, and he's the first. He's a character we played as for the longest, easily, 22 years as his father, 14 years as his grandfather. And now we're Emperor Gerard II, 40 years old, coming to the throne. 
He's already distinguished and faithful, and he's fought in four wars, defensive wars. Those were probably all those rebellions that he had to deal with. All right, so I'll just pause this here. All right, so long live the emperor. And yeah, then you just have all the issues you gotta deal with. You have a new archbishop, which I can't seem to select that for some reason. Yeah, I cannot select it. Okay, so maybe that just doesn't pop up here. Uh, so we also had a faction created against us, the Dissolution Faction. And Duke Ordoff is the leader there. So we'd probably have to deal with like a ton of uh, potential factions and rebellions, all kinds of issues. Uh, this is our, our wife here, which she uh, is currently doing assist ruler. You probably want her to focus on stewardship so you can rule more territory, because you get a plus seven there. So we'd be able to rule nine counties. Uh, so he is he is endorsing us, but you clearly want to improve his opinion by a bit. In fact, we'd probably just throw money at him to do this. How much would you have to pay him? Oh, a stupid amount. And we're greedy, so our character wouldn't want to do that anyway. Um, so yeah, we'll go ahead and sway him. Our new character is Cynical, Greedy, and Callous. Have to get all of our council manned, and just everybody hates us so much. The opinion of the predecessor not helping much in many of these circumstances with the, the powerful vassals. Getting a plus 25 here, I mean, some, some of these characters liked us a lot, but it's just not enough. Uh, the wanting a seat on the council obviously hitting us. But the fact that we're the unpreferred heir. Oh, did we bully this character? Oh. Yeah, apparently we bullied him. He's not a rival, is he? Let me just take a look. We don't know who our rivals are. We have friends, just nobody really all that important. Okay, so yeah, it would be a rough uh, situation. He's probably going to deal with some rebellions. I don't think there's going to be any way to to avoid that. We do have children we can arrange marriages for, though. And so maybe you can uh, get those alliances and stop some of them from, from causing issues. Uh, clearly, he's the best for the chancellor position. Let me just see where we would want to assign everybody. Uh, probably Duke Simon into the spy master. And then... Duke Turold, the Gentle of Normandy, is the best when it comes to stewardship. He's pretty solid, actually. You gotta piss somebody off. And so it would probably be... I guess it had to be Duke Arnolf the Courageous. He is pretty powerful, though, so that's really not the guy you want to piss off. I mean, they're all very powerful. Let me just see here. Um, Lower Lorraine, yeah, he's got... Let me just take a look and see just how many duchies they all have. So he has the two duchies. I mean, all these guys are going to be very powerful. He also has two duchies. So, I mean, there's none of them that you're going to want to upset. You'd want to give them some titles, I think, or, or start granting out titles. Using that money to create new ones and then hand them out so that you'd have uh, less issues here. Like, having the too many duchies is negative 30, so that's kind of a big deal. So you definitely want to to fix that problem. Uh, but again, we were waiting to hand that out for when our son came to the throne uh, so that he'd get the bonus for handing that uh, that duchy title out. All right, so they're all characters that you want on your council, basically. This guy's a really good marshal, so I do want to appoint him, but uh, I don't want to piss off this guy. So I feel like he's got to be the marshal, basically. Yeah, um, so we're looking at Chancellor. Clearly, Duke Ordoff should be the Chancellor. Still hates us, though. Uh, with the steward, we're going to get the Duke of Normandy. The marshal, while he's the best choice, I think we should instead choose him. And then our spy master is going to be Duke Simon. And yeah, you just got to upset one of them, unfortunately. With the lifestyle, of course, you're doing the learning. We can see where he's at. Yeah, he finished up the theologian. So just going to show you what you get here. Clergy opinion, convert faith and county progress. This doesn't make a lot of sense. I'd probably reset this, actually, although it does result in a bunch of stress. I mean, because he's cynical. It doesn't make any sense that he'd go down the theologian route. So I think in this case, because again, it's just kind of random what they select, guys. Uh, it's based off of which one of these three they select. And unless they change this, these three are completely random. So the AI randomly picks one of the three lifestyles. And then which one of these they picks is largely based off of which one of those random lifestyles they got. So when it comes to the lifestyle, I think we'd pick the scholarship. Yeah, we'd pick that. And then we'd probably reset our perks and just take the, the critical stress. So we're overwhelmed with stress. 
And then what we'd want to do is probably invest in whole of body first and then scholar. Yeah, let's go ahead and do this one, then we'll start working on these. I mean, they're all solid. Yeah, none of this really truly matters, but uh, yeah, let's go ahead and go for these. That's stress gain, that's helpful. Time between mental breaks. I don't know that we've ever gone down this route with a character in any of our Let's Plays. We might not have. You know what? We might have, yeah. You know, I think we did do at least the whole body with one character, but it might not have been their main focus. Maybe they did it towards the end of their life. We're gonna start washing our hands and we'll have iron constitution that's increased fertility. Uh, get a bit healthier and then get the whole of body, which is pretty nice to have. And then we'll start working on the, the scholarly, which we still have three perks left to get. And so as far as which rounds we wanna go with first, open-minded might give you the best bonus at the moment because we have all those opinion problems. So I think that would be good to get. Yeah, maybe go for this one too. I don't know how many we have, uh, how many vassals we have that are different faith, but we'll go for that one too. So that might improve the opinion a little bit. We just had to see. Uh, we do have all of our items already on us. We might need to change them up a little bit. So perhaps you want to go with your father's ax since that's what he wielded his whole life. And we already got the armor. And then we would just get rid of these trinkets and I'll look at what we have here. And what would be most beneficial? Um, so yeah, obviously, Heidi's hard to get, so you might want to get that one. Renown's always nice to have. Uh, that helps with the short reign duration. Something we're currently suffering from. So it might be worth going for. Uh, this is actually something you definitely want to put in place since we're going down that that route we have a ton of items probably gonna need to get rid of some of these here uh, but let's just go through these so so this one here we're gonna destroy that get us a little bit of money i suppose it makes sense to get this one here since we are suffering from that penalty could get more learning from the brilliant gemstone let's see what our other options are probably more prowess you know i like getting some prowess And then, I think we might get rid of this one here and put this one in place instead, this one, because it gets it gets less piety, but you do get the health boost, you get the zealot vassal opinion as well, which we just need to improve vassal opinion. So I think that might be better for this particular moment. And what you could do is because this one's just giving the, the renown, you could instead put this one in place and also get spouse opinion. I think we're going to get rid of this one, guys. It's just not as good as getting some more prestige and some uh, some prowess here. So let's go and get rid of this one. And then, yeah, I think we're going to get rid of that, too. It's just not that great. I mean, the short range duration, negative 8% is helpful, but... Yeah, I think this is pretty solid here. Court should look fine. The only thing you might want to change is the book that you have in place to make sure it's... Uh, you're getting the, the bonus for the learning, if we have one. It looks like we do not. Okay. So yeah, it doesn't really matter which one we do as far as the lifestyle experience bonus, just what you want here. And I think it's probably better to get the natural dread increased. Yeah, let's go ahead and replace the Franconian about warfare, so that's the one we have selected here. Let's make sure, yeah. I mean, it's nice to have, but I feel like this is the one we're going to want to put in place for right now, just because it's going to be a little bit more beneficial at the moment with that natural dread and the reduction to the to the stress gain. We're incredibly stressed out at the moment. All right, so yeah, then you just have all these issues you got to deal with here. Who are we currently trying to boost opinion with, this other character? Oh, okay. It's the Duke of Normandy. All right, he actually doesn't hate you as bad as some of the other characters. You might want to instead uh, work on them. Uh, we have to give out a bunch of titles here. There's there's a ton of stuff we'd have to do. You'd probably want to like create more powerful vassal over here since we have all our father's titles. Uh, clearly want to give out one of those duchy titles. I think we have multiple duchy titles. Let me just take a look here. I mean, we got all these kingdom titles. How many is this? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six kingdom titles. 
Uh, but as far as duchy tiles go, we clearly have too many. Just looking at this, you got one, two, three, four. So you'd have to grant out two of those those titles. We'd probably grant out the one in Spain and then the one over here, which we only have the one county to. So you'd want to grant it to one of the counts in the area, but there's actually one, only one choice if you didn't want to give it to the church, which is, you know, it's difficult to get it back from them. So there's only one choice, which would be this guy. And of course you could just grant it to somebody new, but it might be more useful to have somebody, I mean, he'd only have to control churchmen. Yeah, so I suppose you could just grant it to anybody. This guy doesn't really like us. He's generous, so you're always going to get that penalty. And yeah, you have all kinds of penalties here, so it might be better to just grant it out to somebody new so you can have like a, uh, a duke who actually supports you. Maybe take a look at like your uh, your knights here, a big group of knights that you got. Alright, so we have the Iron Knight still. I'm not sure if this is the same Iron Knight. It looks like it's a different one. Because I think this is our son's... Yeah, these are our son's guys. And you also have this one here. Still got to reappoint that one as well. Yeah, if you just wanted to award it to one of your knights. I don't know if we got anybody that doesn't already have any titles. Suppose you got this guy here. He's lowborn though. Yeah, there's nobody really in here who's actually serving as a knight. So you just grant it to somebody random as well. So just like take a look in here. Uh, we want this one selected and just who who's all available to grant it to could grant it to your to your son here I guess you got to give him some titles, but I don't think we'd probably give him the titles in Spain Spain's kind of like the The titles you give the prince Yeah, kind of that's what we'll do from here on out. You can even make him a king down there as well So you don't have to manage any of the Spanish uh, vassals though None of them are our powerful ones causing us any issues could make him like the king of Italy But we wouldn't be able to give him any counties there and he would just deal with rebellion after rebellion, more than likely. Uh, so yeah, I'm not going to give him this one. I think you'd probably give it to somebody else. Maybe somebody who has a decent opinion of you from the beginning. You have additional sons. So you could start granting it to them as well. We have a friend here. We could grant it to. He's got decent intrigue. Yeah, why not grant it to a friend? Who is this guy? And he's of that one dynasty as well. His father was that one emperor. This is that family up here who we took all their, took all the items they had that they had inherited. Just, they did not have a good time. We, uh, I think we might have even killed some of them, if I'm not mistaken. But anyways, yeah, we could could grant it to him. He's a friend, so it makes it makes sense to to give it to him. I always want uh, friends in power. So yeah, let's go and give it to him. He's also not too far away from where he's at before. So let's select him. He's going to get the county and the duchy and really boost that opinion up. So yeah, let's go ahead and grant that to him. And then you still have to grant out the Spanish territory here as well. And again, I think we should give this to our son and probably just make him a king. And then he'll get all of these titles. And this will get rid of so many that we'd actually not have enough. Yeah, we, we probably will get more though in the upcoming wars. Uh, but it hurts you in your troop numbers though. And so that's something to consider, is that we lose some of our some of our dudes, particularly from here, because this is a, a pretty solid location. So you could just grant him the the duchy located here for now until we get more territory. Yeah, I guess that's what we'd want to do. So yeah, let's go and get our son selected. Oh, you can release your anger on him. I see because we have that uh, one stress trait. Uh, but yeah, we're going to go grant him the titles here. Let me just find this, because yeah, we want to grant him the entire duchy. We'll grant him all the counties and the duchy. So he'll love us. He already really likes us. And so now he'll rule as a duke. And eventually we'll make him a king. We'll grant him these territories uh, once we have more holdings, which I assume would be pretty soon. Considering the fact that uh, we're about to face some some rebellions guys. I think we'll have some significant Rebellions over here. Uh, these should no longer be disabled now that we're no longer over the limit here You just like unpause this and see what happens. Uh, that's also our stress problem um, so We can become a grouchy ruler. I guess we'll do that one Not result in us losing that stress, but what I wanted to see here before we ended today's episode 
We can't do alliances. So yeah, I guess we're going to do all these. Oh, not her. She's always trying to get that alliance from us. Uh, we can ally with him, though, so we'll do that. But what I wanted to see is just how many issues we're going to be facing from uh, the factions. But you can't really see that until after we've done all these alliances. So those marriages help us out quite a bit that our father did. And yeah, the Hungarian king, we'd want to ally him. He could help us out with these likely rebellions. And this is a Baron. Eh, why not? He's at least inside our realm. And then, of course, we'd also want to ally with our son. Alright, so that looks pretty solid. And there's one more here. Just take a look at which one I'm missing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you clearly want to ally with him as well. I didn't know I could ally with him. I didn't really need to give him a position on the council, did I? All right, so dealt with the stress, though still pretty high. So you would have to do something else to get rid of it. Maybe get angry at somebody or whatever. Got a few different options here as far as decisions go. Yeah, with all those alliances formed, hopefully this reduce the power of these factions that have clearly formed. Yeah, tons of alliances here. And looks like that is all. All right, so now let's just take a look at the faction situation. So here's the dissolution faction. You still got some members of it. So Brittany has joined it. He just became part of the empire. But most importantly, you have uh, this duke here, Duke Ordoff. So he'd cause a lot of problems. So you'd have to bite that. Definitely can't let them dissolve our empire here. Uh, this is the Sicilian one that has the most support. That's the rebellion you're going to have to face. So you could just grant him the the kingdom and then not have to deal with this anymore which is the main faction that we have problems with uh, this guy wants this kingdom he's definitely not getting that you would not grant that to him he doesn't have any other members that was just himself so he's not really a problem uh, independence faction not really an issue just a countess you got some uh, Dutch Catholic populace here they could become an issue eventually and then you have a Liberty faction. Not too big of a problem at the moment. Okay, so yeah, you'd probably just want to grant this kingdom to him and then you don't have to deal with it. Yeah, that's, that's the main uh, title that you gotta to worry about. And so yeah, if you just grant him this, which he technically has the rights to, I mean, he rules all Sicily as it is. So yeah, you can grant him the kingdom of Sicily and then you uh, basically dissolve the entire faction, improve his opinion as well. Because there's nothing for the faction to rebel over now. So yeah, now it's disbanded. And so that alone dealt with the most dangerous faction here. Though of course you now do have a new king. He did take all those vassals as well. So yeah, those are all now under him. So yeah, I got a new king underneath you, so that's something to be concerned about since he's not a member of our dynasty here. Yeah, King King Drogo. Uh, is he on our council? He's not, so you'd have to put him on the council because clearly he's our, our most powerful uh, vassal now at this point since he's a he's a king, so you'd have to appoint him somewhere here. Uh, it looks like the, the Duke of Normandy is no longer a powerful vassal, so the situation has already changed here. Uh, so you could put Duke, e Duke Evo over here and then move him over there. But where is the king? It's interesting that he's not a choice in here, since clearly he should be the most powerful. But yeah, then what we would do next, if we were to continue to play this, is to create a bunch of titles, basically. Uh, we'd create titles. We got a lot that we can create. Uh, we can create the Empire of, of France now. Uh, so you could hold two imperial titles here. Why would you not do that? Yeah, let's create that title too. And so now we have two imperial titles. And then there's a bunch of kingdoms we can create. Kingdom of Brittany. Yeah, you'd probably want to create these. That would help you out. I think that this is in the Empire of France, so you don't really have to have this one here. But you would probably want some of these ones down here. But Brittany would help with boosting the opinion of the Duke of Brittany, so you might want to get that. 
since now you'll be his rightful liege. But then you'll want a bunch of duchy titles, which there's a ton that we can create here, guys. A whole bunch of different uh, duchy titles. And so you want to create those and start handing them out, essentially, uh, with the money that we have here. But you can see we're not earning anywhere near as, as much money as our father was. About half of what he was earning. But still a lot. Yeah, it would be interesting to see exactly uh, how this went down with uh, ruling as new characters. It's just unfortunate we do have to end the series here. I did enjoy it, though. I hope you did as well. Uh, if you did, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. If you'd like to support the channel, check out the description of any of our videos. Find links to our PayPal, Patreon, and Teespring store. You can also support the channel by becoming a member here on YouTube, something we started up just recently. And so we have like three different categories, and that gives you a few different benefits here on the channel. You also find links to our social media if you'd like to follow us on those. And finally, you find links to our Discord if you'd like to join our community. If you're looking for anything to watch while you wait for the next series to start, which will be a Hearts of Iron 4 series, I posted about this in a uh, comment in the community section. And so we have a vote going, which is open for members, and it's for the next Hoi 4 series with four different options. Members can, can vote in that poll as well as patrons, and that would be on Patreon for them in the community section for members. And so that's the series we're going to be starting when we come back from our vacation, which is going to be a while. It's a long vacation, so uh, we're going to be coming back on the 3rd, and thus I'll record on the 4th, and the series will start on December 5th. And so if you want to vote, then either become a patron or become a member here on the channel. Uh, if not, maybe check out the front page of channels where you can find uh, a ton of different series you can watch while you wait for us to come back. Uh, but I do hope to see you guys on another video, and uh, thanks for watching.